Hello, everybody. More Cobra Convergence 7 coming at you, and I have a special guest today. Please uh, introduce yourself to the audience and tell everybody who you are and what you do. My name, my name is James, and you might know me as Agent Chuckles. Uh, I've got uh, an audio podcast where we talk about my partner, uh, Steve, the writing dad. We talk about G.I. Joe comics, and I also have started a YouTube channel where uh, we talk about the uh, toys. Awesome. Uh, Agent Chuckles, hmm, um, what exactly was the inspiration for that name? It seems, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know a whole lot about G.I. Joe, but where you know, did you come up with that? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. It just it just hit me one day. Uh, no, uh, as, as a youth, when, uh, when I was uh, not as follically challenged as I am these days, I had blonde hair and, and, uh, of course, the Chuckles figure had this had the ball neck that could do this, and and uh, I often put that head on any body I wanted, and um, yeah, sort of resembled me sometimes. So uh, you know, I'd be on Lieutenant Falcon's body sometimes, or I'd be on the eighty five Snake Eyes, and if I needed to ninja around a little bit um, in my playtime. So uh, Chuckles has always had a soft spot, and uh, it was my second email address, Agent Chuckles. Um, so. That that's perfect. I, I picked Hooded Cobra Commander because people are always wanting me to cover my face. So, you know, it, it's basically the same thing. Basically the same thing. Um, so uh, you got a podcast going and you have a YouTube channel going now. Um, right. So uh, that we will have uh, links in the description of this video. So people are going to be going and checking it out as soon as we're done here. Uh, awesome. What can they expect to see um, on your podcast and your YouTube channel? So for the podcast, uh, we were reviewing the Marvel comics. Um, so my goal, um, I, I live on an island in the Pacific Northwest, and th there's no one around me but no one. And so I'm trying to, to spread the love of G.I. Joe out to my friends, and hopefully there'll be the, hopefully the trickle-down effect will hurt their kids. And then, you know, because uh, that's the only way the G.I. Joe is going to maintain its um, whatever popularity it's got is if we get the kids involved. So. Uh, so I partnered with my friend, Steve, the writing dad, um, at the one writing dad, uh, for TikTok and, uh, <laughs> Instagram. Um, and, and so he played GI Joe as a, as a child, um, but he's not really up on the comics or anything like that. And, um, so we're sort of taking this adventure on together, um, reading the comics an issue at a time. And, uh, and then, so is for the YouTube, uh, we do plastic profiles where I'll look at a classic figure and then compare it to the uh, a more modern interpretation. So we're doing the classified scales, the, the classified series of figures. And um, I, the file cards were always my one of my most favorite things about G.I. Joe. Um, I, I can still remember just, you know, where Mutt was born or, you know, things like things that a normal human shouldn't remember of an imaginary character's imaginary biography. Um, <laughs> but, um, so knowing these characters and 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 who they are as people and and trying to see which figure better represents the information in that file card and um it's not so much a, a broad spectrum of all the different storm shadows or all the different you know it's just this figure versus this figure which one better uh encompasses who that character is that, that's a really cool idea uh, because we we did get an insight into a lot of these characters through the file card, perhaps sometimes more than we got through other media because some of these guys didn't appear in other media that often. Right. Um, so um, uh, Chuckles, um, uh, definitely you had an attachment to that uh, right. figure and that character. Um was that about the time you got into G.I. Joe? Uh, was that like your early days? Was that about the era that you came into it? Uh, you're talking about Chuckles? Uh, no, I started I started in 82. Um, I'm 47 now. Uh, my first figure was Straight Arm Rock and Roll. Um, I think I got him $1.75 at Sears or something like that. Um, and uh, and then I got Breaker and the Ram. And, and then I have no recollection of how I got everybody else. But um they just appeared and um so rock and roll is is always special to me and uh you know with this new classified figure i'm i'm super excited about that and uh as far as chuckles yeah it was it was the blonde hair i the pistol was cool too but i think i broke the holster right away you know it's 
Um, I never watched Miami Vice, so the, the Hawaiian shirt didn't didn't really. Um, it was really the blonde hair, I guess. But then, but the way Larry, uh, I call him Larry because we're buds. Uh, yeah. Larry Hama used him in the in the comic book series was the, you know, he'd be the 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 CIA guy in the background, you know, in these important events, you know, and, and things like that. And I I don't know it's something about that. And actually thinking about it now with my fascination with files and file cards, it kind of works to, works uh, better than I would have. Uh, you talked about the comic book and that's really where we have uh chuckles represented because let's see he was in that movie uh in 87 uh and he had no lines a movie (laughs) where where don johnson did a voice in the movie but not that guy (laughs) he's not going to be the guy in the hawaiian shirt yeah no 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 (laughs) forget that um so uh also and uh, uh you mentioned that uh you didn't remember how uh, you got the other figures. Um, the statute of limitations on shoplifting is long past. I don't think you need to worry about that. As your attorney in this matter, I feel that you're yeah. you're safe. Yeah. At yeah. This we exchange, point. I, I gave him. A, I gave you a dollar before we started talking here. So, <laughs> um, so uh, so you came in early, um, eighty two. Uh, so um, you were there for the the straight arms and uh, right. the like the. Uh, all the guys kind of looking very similar. Yeah. Um, what would be your favorite era, though? I mean, if if that's where you got started, um, do you have a lot of nostalgia for that time period? Um, or, I mean, I've, you obviously stuck with it for a while. Uh, what's your favorite era for G.I. Joe? You know, I would tell you that it would be 82 to 85 or so. Because of the vehicles and, the, and all that. But then when you put that all on a shelf, you're like, man, eh, I need some color, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. But I think that's part of the beauty of G.I. Joe is, you know, you can make it what you want. If you want, if you want your team to be pseudo Avengers, you can do that. If you want, you know, strict military, you can do that. You know, you can make it what you want. And, um, and, and I love that. And I respect that when there's people that are going crazy because the, the grunt comes with that, that laser rifle it doesn't do anything for me, but you know, cause grunt is a particular guy, you know, he's not an army builder. A lot of people used him like that, but uh, you know, it's, you can make it what you want. And um, so if you were to, if I were to, if you were to really needle me uh, hand on the Bible, um, I would say probably 82, 83 in there would be my favorite. Um, just my, my dad was in the, well, actually both my mother and father were in the military. And so I, I have a strong attachment to, um, the real traditional military looking gear and, and vehicles and figures. Um, so, uh, you, you mentioned the comic book and you mentioned Larry, uh, our, our old yeah, buddy. Old Larry. Larry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you get into the comic books early on? Was that part of your experience in, in that early era of GI Joe? I was aware of them. I'd seen the commercials and, you know, it was the animation that drew me in. Was like, Ooh, what is that? What's going on there? But it never occurred to me to track down a comic until my first issue was number 50 the uh the the double sized invasion of springfield and um you know from there on then it just hit and then i'm looking for back issues and and um so that would have been about what is that 86 or so 86 somewhere in there and then uh 87 tour of duty the television show came out and i watched that and then that was about the same time as i got snake eyes's backstory of 20 is it 27 the one with the the patch and the picture of his sister and all that you know yeah um you know then it was just it had it had me full in its grasp but I, by then you know because then i could see every week on tv you know storm shadow and and snake eyes and stalker walking through the you know humping through the woods you know that sort of thing so um the, uh, the issue number 50 that's a great one to start lots oh, of it's amazing gosh yeah yeah, just, yeah yeah that's that it's a good starting point that, yeah, that yeah. i can see how that would get you hooked in i had a lot of questions right away it's like storm shadow was dead you yeah know, what? <laughs> but uh yeah spoiler alert um oh, oh yeah 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 for for anybody who hasn't read the almost 40 year old comic book spoiler <laughs> spoiler <laughs> uh so um uh so you got into the comic books you were in uh the into the toys from an uh, the, from an er- very early period um was there a phase where you got out of it for a while because that seems to be a common theme uh, um, most folks with a few exceptions 
Um, they were going well in G.I. Joe. They enjoyed it a lot, but then they moved away from it. Did you have that yeah. period where you moved away from it? Yeah, it was a dark day. I remember it. I remember it clearly. Um, I actually was working at Toys R Us at the time. Um, this is what I consider my moving away from it. I didn't actually play with toys then, but I had my original Joes. Um, and I've never confessed that, confessed this to anyone. So this is just between you and me. Oh, nobody, nobody else will see it. No, don't, don't no, worry, no. Don't worry. Just um, yeah, unload I, everything. <laughs> a coworker was an avid collector of, uh, those horrible starting lineups figures and, and, uh, pretty much anything else. He all, uh, he had uh, uh, a rookie piece, a starting lineup rookie piece of Mike Piazza. Um, and um, being a fan of uh, New York City's redheaded children, the, the New York Mets, um, I traded my Joes for the rookie piece. Uh, well, um, a, a yep. starting lineup, you say, huh? Um, yeah, they, they, you know, I don't know if you know this, but they haven't held on, held yeah. their collector value. You know, um, I, I'm afraid we're going to have to end this interview uh, early. All right. Uh, well, thanks nice for having me. You. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, no, for, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. No, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Um, I'll just, I'll trim that out. Nobody I got them all it. back. I mean, not okay, my original yeah. ones, yeah. but it's I got so all good. the figures back. Well, that, that actually leads to my next question was, um, obviously you're back in it now. How did, how did you return to it? Um, uh, you know, I, it's always been there. You know, I, I never got rid of the comics. I always had the comics. Um, and I've had phases where I've, you know, due to financial things, I've had to lose some and gain some back and, you know, that ebbs and flows. Um, and, uh, <sighs> I don't, I don't, it's just always been there. And I think that's what, you know, Star Wars, I still like Star Wars, but that's kind of gone. I don't, I don't do anything with them. I don't, I don't do much with, I like Transformers, but that's mostly my son's thing. And, and, um, you know, so I don't really do much with them anymore. It's just, it's, G.I. Joe has always been there. And um, unlike the New York Mets and a few movies, they've never really hurt me like that. So, um <laughs> All right. Well, well. Uh, congratulations then for for having it all always around. That actually is a uh, uh, that's a that's a little bit rare, and it's it's kind of nice to it's a little bit refreshing. A few p folks that I've talked to, uh, they never left. You know, they stuck around. Sure. Uh, but yeah. uh, but uh, for all, so for some people, there was some defining event that kind of brought them back in. But you have been you you've had it around you for a while. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, yep. So, uh, so that's got to feed into your, uh, your show. So tell us, tell us a little bit about how you started your show, why you started your show, what you wanted to do, um, and kind of what the whole impetus of that was. Well, I think the, the, the thing that really got me started was, um, uh, moving out here to the Pacific Northwest. You know, I've got my toys around me. Um, they're all staring at me from their shelves. What am I going to do with these things? And, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta get that out. I gotta get out of my system. And, um, you know, during the pandemic, I really started reaching out into podcasts and things like that. YouTube's, uh, YouTube's I'm 85 years old, by the way. <laughs> um, and, on the uh, yes, on the, inter on the interwebs. Um, and that's where I discovered your show and what's on Joe mine and these other great shows and, and, and even better people. And, uh, I, it just, it just, it just pulled me in and I wanted to contribute something and, um, get it out of my system. And, and I feel like that's what I'm doing. You know, it's, um, I'm talking about the things that I'd like to talk about. I'm talking about the file cards. I'm talking about the comics. I'm looking at the toys. I'm trying to recruit somebody else. Steve, you're going to get a toy shelf one day. Just tell your wife now. Yeah. It's happening. It you know, it's it happened. just expands. Once it starts, Look, it expands. These are these are my original bed sheets. It's going to happen. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, I'll remind everybody there will be links in the description of this video. Uh, and as we speak, your contribution to Cobra Convergence Seven should be going up. And thank you for being in uh, this year. Thank you for oh, being yeah. in the convergence. It's much appreciated. Thank you for um, having me. It's great. For those who. Um, uh, for those who are new here, I guess, um, we're recording this well before um, 
Cobra Convergence. So these interviews are happening uh, kind of in the month of June. So uh, so this is well before you've actually done what you plan to do. But um, it, do you have an idea of what you're going to do for oh, Cobra yeah. Convergence yep. 7? Yep. We're going to, uh, Steve, the writing dad, and I, we're going to do uh, a Plastic Profiles episode on Storm Shadow. Nice. Um, and, you know, he's just someone... We're, we're trying to do the comics and the and the toy reviews uh, at similar speed to keep the characters that we're coming across sort of so they have some sort of synergy. Um, but I just can't wait any longer. Storm Shadow, he's he might be my favorite Joe and my favorite Cobra. You know, the Joe is maybe, but definitely Cobra. Um, he's such a complex character, and there's so much to talk about. Um, I, so we're gonna do that, and um, and it, um, we're gonna have a blast doing it. That that is that is a deep subject. There is a lot to talk about yes, with Storm Shadow. Yes. My goodness, yep. Yep. Um, there aren't very many characters that are as developed as Storm Shadow. There's such a rich trove of material uh, to draw from. So that's exciting, and and I uh, am a big fan of Storm Shadow. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, so by the time uh, this is up, then uh, then that should be up. So. Uh, our, again, everyone, once you're done watching this, uh, make sure you check out the link and uh, go check out Agent Chuckles. Uh, so um, I think we, well, at least we've uh, talked about your uh, your favorite uh, Joe, um, yep. or at least the one that, uh, that that's your namesake. Right. Um, and I think you may have given away um, your favorite Cobra. Is, is Storm Shadow your favorite Cobra? Yeah, I'd have to say he's my favorite Cobra. You know, if when when you're setting them up a shelf and you're like, well, these are gonna be my favorites, I, he's gonna he's always the first one I grab. You know, it's you know, I I could have a shelf of just Storm Shadow and then Snake Eyes, and you've got well, Stalker's got to go with him, and then you know, because he goes with both of them. You know, it's just he's the sort of the linchpin that holds uh, holds that all together in my mind. So. Yeah, a Stalker kind of brought everything together into. Uh, from the Vietnam, you know, friendship, comradeship into uh, G.I. Joe. Yeah, Stalker is kind of the linchpin. Um, Storm Shadow, though, is vitally important to to the lore. Right. Uh, do you have a, a favorite version of Storm Shadow? Doesn't have to be I, vintage, like no, all no, time favorite. I, I, I do, and I'm just making sure that I'm thinking of the other ones. Yeah, it's... I really like the classified, but I don't think you can. Oh, I don't, spoilers for my show. Uh, I don't think you can beat uh, the original '84 Storm Shadow. It's yeah, especially when he's pearly white. Goodness, he's it's a thing of beauty, and the bright red Cobra logo there. It's awesome. It's getting harder to find them uh, all yeah, nice and yeah. white and not yellowed. But yeah. back on when they were fresh and on the pegs back in 1984, man, <clears throat> that that white uniform was striking. Yeah. The the cobra emblem on the chest is like it jumps out and says "Buy me, I'm a really yeah. cool action figure." Well, you know, when you set him up with his, you know, his buddies too, you've got blue Cobra Commander, you've got black Destro, black Baroness, blue and red Scrap Iron, and all that. But then that white Storm Shadow, you're like, Oof. yeah, that, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So, um, uh, yeah, a Storm Shadow, incredibly striking figure, uh, an, an extremely popular character. Um, was it the figure that drew you to Storm Shadow first, um, or did you develop that um, when you were reading the comic book or kind of got into the the, the, the character and its history? Well, I, I like the Storm Shadow figure first, but it's when I went and read the comics and that sort of thing, and that took me back to a whole new appreciation of the figure. Um, I had the figure a couple of years by the time I read that comic, uh, at least, and... Um, and then, you know, I kind of, oh, well, is that, oh, geez, this guy, oh, you know, and then, so then I'm like, forget it, you know, he's, he's, he's the goat now, you know, it's. Um, uh, you also mentioned that he could be your favorite uh, Cobra or Joe, because uh, there was. It's a, more arguable, more arguable for Joe, definitely yeah. Cobra, more arguable for Joe. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, but no, no, that's, that's great. Um, and, um, uh, so you'll be able to talk in depth about storm shadow here for Cobra convergence. And right. uh, I hope everybody, uh, goes and checks that out. I will be checking it out <laughs> as great. soon as, uh, as soon as it goes up. So I hope everybody after they watch this immediately goes and checks that out. Um, so, uh, we talked about, um, uh, your, uh, your favorite Joe, your favorite Cobra, and and kind of the origin of GI Joe. But uh, you said that you're comparing them with uh, with classified. So you're comparing sure. the compare and contrast the the vintage with the the most modern um, uh, version of the character. Right. Um, what's your perspective on where GI Joe is today, as far as toys and collectibles? Uh, how just how do you feel about it? Um, you know, I think classifieds really, really, you know, it's, it's great stuff. I mean, I, I'd say it's as good as anything out there. You know, the Valiverse has maybe got more realistic weapons and that sort of thing, but, uh, um, and I, and I'm not really trying to drag them into this as, as far as what GI Joe is. I think that the figures are as good as ever. Um, but you can't, the eighties Joe had just such an, the perfect time and place and every environment for it to just catch fire like it did, you know, they're never going to, you know, they, how's the dragonfly, everybody. We're excited about the HasLab, right? No, but <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they're never going to have all the things they had for these new figures, you know, and, and, and I have a 3d printer, so I hope to do some things on my own. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as, creating play sets and things like that, but um, they, they're never going to do all that. And that's, that's a shame, but it's also, gosh, why would they do that? You know, it, no one's going to have a place to put, we always, they, we always hear about the flag, you know, no one's going to have a place to put a 30 foot flag. Yeah. We need um, it. We must have a classified scale flag. Why haven't they done that yet? <laughs> or, or, or get out. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, you know, I, I'd love to see a sky strike, right? And I've seen them on, on Facebook groups, you know, people who are 3d printing the, the planes and things like that, but gosh, I don't have room for that. I'm, I've got a Mamba. I'm trying to do a video for that and I don't have a place to put that um, right now, um, you know, where it can be displayed and look awesome. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's just, it, as far as the States go, it, it's going to be hard to beat that time period, the eighties for, for collecting GI Joe. Um, I'm excited for what the classified series has to hold in the future. The grunt figure looked amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, but, uh, it's, it's never going to be what it was. Um, you know, unless they can start getting kids involved and then who knows, you know? Yeah. I think that that is always the key to, to keeping it going. Um, and you're right, like it hit in the 80s at the perfect time uh, and in the perfect scale. I mean, in that scale, they were very playable. You got a lot of vehicles uh, and uh, and culturally, you know, that's, you know, that's was just the time to, to do a military toy line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, but yeah, getting getting the next generation in, I think, is uh, that's the biggest challenge. I think they have us. They got right. they got their hooks in already yeah yeah, yeah. um but uh no but uh, uh i'm glad to know that that you're enjoying what they have out now so am i um i, I guess um if you could imagine a direction that gi joe should go in to maybe get that next generation do you have any thoughts or ideas about that you know i've thought about that i've thought about that um i really think you know, it's cartoons or games. It's got to be one or the other. And and I don't know if you start out with something aimed at teenagers and then the little kids will, you know, glom off that, you know, I don't, I don't know how you do it. Um, I, I think animation definitely, I mean, I liked resolute, but I don't, I know that that's not really a kid's thing. Uh, kids, kids. Um, the renegades was great. Um, it wouldn't be my cup of tea if I had to pick something to just sit and watch, but I enjoyed that it was GI Joe and it was a story with GI Joe. Um, and, you know, cer certainly if that had been given a couple more seasons, I, I don't see why that wouldn't have caught on with kids. 
Um, and then, you know, actually made a wave of toys push to go with that, not just, you know, kind of filtering a figure or two out here or there. You know, I, I know there were more, but it seemed like it was kind of, it wasn't a, a whole line, you know, like with Star Wars, the Clone Wars, you got the whole wave for that movie and, and then the first season of the show. And then, but it, it didn't really feel like that with the G.I. Joe uh, with Renegades. Yeah, I, I think um, a more uh, concerted effort would be needed to to really exploit any popularity that you have through media. Um, I think the closest that Joe has done um, recently is that they did get figures out for that uh, Snake Eyes movie. Hey, that yeah, had Storm yeah. Shadow in it. That, yeah. that one, that, that it did him. have Storm Shadow. Loved Storm uh, Shadow. Yeah. So. Um, uh, but yeah, some some coordination, and and hopefully that'll that'll happen. Uh, it does yep. seem like they are trying. They, they, right. they may not be landing everything right now, but it does seem yep. like they are trying. So hopefully something will yep. will hit. That would be yep. fantastic. That would be. S- Snake eyes didn't hit, but but yeah. you know, <laughs> well, you know, something's I mean, got to hit. It had storm shadow in it. Let's, it, let's it, focus it on that. He was the hero in the movie. I don't That's understand. Right. <laughs> That's right. Um, so uh, you, do you have any special plans for your channel? I know that everybody's going to go check it out um, uh, right after watching this interview. Check out your Cobra Convergence 7 uh, uh, contribution. Um, so hopefully people will be subscribing. Hopefully people will be following uh, the future of Agent Chuckles. Do you have do you have um, a roadmap? Um, do you have an idea of what people should expect to see down the road uh, if they follow your channel and your podcast? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to create a place where, um, you know, people come and watch and, and, and see me and, and Steven talking and, and nerding out about G.I. Joe and, and uh, all things G.I. Joe and, and, uh, and feel like you're talking with friends, you know, that, that's what I, I want. I want to, you know, create, I'm not going to say I want to create a community. I, that's, it's already there. Um, I just want to be part of it. Um, I, my, I think my last question, cause we're running sh- uh, low on time, but my last question, and I think the most important one, mm-hmm. who is your favorite um, GI Joe themed YouTube channel specifically of a guy who wears glasses mm. um and uh is based in oklahoma oh okay um, oklahoma all right and uh, and also has a beard within that narrow range who's your favorite wow there's just so many in that oklahoma region uh that meet those parameters but i'm gonna have to say uh hooded Cobra commander 788 oh, that, that that thank you thank you so much you know i, I, I i'm honored um uh but uh we are we're uh we've got a couple more minutes left and thank you again for joining uh and please everyone who's watching immediately go check out the the links and um agent chuckles cobra convergence seven contribution should be up right now as you're watching this um i like to wrap up by uh uh, basically turning over the floor to you for any last minute comments to uh to the folks who are watching um well, please check us out. Um, I'm Agent Chuckles. You can find, uh, you can email the show, uh, g1joepod at gmail.com. Um, I'm on YouTube at Agent Chuckles. My TikTok is at Agent Chuckles. And uh, my Instagram is Agent Chuckles 9. I do take some toy pictures uh, periodically uh, with my phone. And I'm starting to branch out into editing with my phone. You know, everything's on my phone, so you can expect phone quality. Um, but uh, yeah, and then Stephen the Writing Dad at the One Writing Dad, he's uh, he's my my partner in this adventure, and um, and yeah, we're just trying to have a good time talking about you know GI Joe comics and and the toys. That's fantastic. Uh, thank you again for being here. Thank you again for being in Cobra Convergence Seven. I'm very excited to see uh, what you've got coming up, and I will be watching it, and hopefully everyone else will be watching it too. So uh, that will wrap it up. Thanks again for being here, and everybody. Uh, go check out Agent Chuckles right now. So, um, thanks. Yeah, should we do it? Should we do a Cobra? Not everybody does a Cobra. At the, I'll do a Cobra. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, I'll I'll do a countdown from three. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Cobra. cobra!
All right. All right. Thanks. And see everybody soon. <laughs> Bye-bye.